Last weekend, I drove down to Mississippi to visit my buddy Grover Brown, PhD. Me and Grover have been talking about me coming and visiting where he lives in uh, southern Mississippi for years. And we finally were able to line things up and make it happen. And I'm so glad I'm able to show you guys this. So please enjoy. All right, so uh, I put on my goofy glasses out here with my buddy Grover, and uh, this is the first spot. And there was a bunch of these smooth soft shells uh, out foraging on this riffle behind me. And I mean, I'm used to seeing spiny soft shells, but this is the first time I've ever uh, in person seen one of these guys. And unlike a spiny, they're completely smooth across here. Grover pointed out that they actually close up. They're not very aggressive at all. They're very uh, kind of timid. And as you can see, just a completely smooth shell. Totally different than the uh, spiny soft shells that I catch back in Georgia. I look like a dork with these glasses on, but it's totally worth it to find a soft shell like this. This is, I mean, this makes the whole trip for me right here. It's getting to see the smooth soft shell. Now, which, which subspecies is this? Calvada. So this is Calvada, which would be the Gulf Coast smooth. Gulf Coast smooth soft shell. Make sure you get Grover. He's the guy that brought us here. <laughs> I got goofy glasses too. Yeah. Yeah, kids, wear your, wear your goofy glasses and win cool prizes. <laughs> so awesome. I'm gonna get some pictures of this guy and then we're gonna let him go. And there was like, dude, there was like six or seven probably. But the thing is, is you can put traps out for these all day and, they won't and you won't them. catch them. You, wow. These do not go to traps. Well, they will, but very, very rarely. Now are these limited to specific drainages? Uh, so these are just in the Mobile, the Pascagoula, and Pearl. And maybe some of the smaller uh, Gulf Coast ranges between them. And they're strictly riverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like they like bigger rivers. Okay. All right. So I'm really, really stoked. Finally caught a turtle that I've only seen in books and only heard about. And so now we're gonna let it go and go back to its habitat. Uh, <laughs> been in, been here with Grover for maybe about 15 minutes and caught an amazing lifer, the smooth soft shell really really stoked on this um can't wait to see what else we find uh, even if it's just this turtle it's worth the drive just to get to see this finally in person after probably 35 years of knowing about them but never knowing anything about them or getting to see them so I'm pretty stoked all right girl you're going back down to your river sunset on the leaf river here in southern mississippi awesome turtle habitat uh, earlier today, saw two uh, Flava Maculata, blotched map turtles basking over there. Uh, right now, Grover and I are checking this bank, looking for hatchling turtles hanging out in these rocks. So, uh, super stoked. First day, totally awesome. Got some really cool stuff. And uh, it's so it's so fun to check out new habitat in a new place that I've never been before. Pretty awesome, actually. So Grover's got a uh, adult Carinatus Razorback Musk Turtle. I know a couple of you guys asked to see one, so here it is. The first Razorback musk turtle we're gonna see. Check out the noggin and wow, check that out that beak, which is solid black. Because this time of year they're eating a lot of seeds. That's so cool. It's it's so funny like to uh, have seen them, you know, on your Instagram and stuff for, for so long and then to actually get to see one in person. So he has a weird eye, so they usually look like this. Mm -hmm. But I would say on five or six individuals, I've found them where they have a really constricted pupil mm -hmm. and the eyes a slightly different color, green. And I don't know, it's not, I think it's something congenital. Just interesting. Can he see out of it? No, I don't think they can. I don't think he can. And so, I, like I said, I found five or six like this before. Interesting. Dude, they, it's, it's so cool to see the difference in the color too, because these have like almost like a yellow oh, peachy yeah. color to the cheeks that you don't see like uh oh, you don't see it you in, cannot in most you can't find this in captives yeah yeah There's exactly something in the diet that they just 
Oh, I, I agree with that 100%. Nice he is beat up. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> he's definitely nose. been in some scraps. And it's cool. He's got like a like a dip and almost like a flare to the rear marginals. Mm -hmm. Like, and he's not very keeled either. All right, what we got? What we got? We have two. Count them. One and <laughs> two striped neck bus turtles. That's awesome. So this is a place you come to a lot, so you know Quite that, regularly. You know they're here. This one's marked. It is number twenty, uh, twenty-three. Okay. But this wow, girl, is, look how light that is. It's unmarked. Beautiful. So, so this is a new female. So, so you've never her. seen this one before. I've never seen this one before, but this is number twenty-three. Is that a male? It is a male. No wait, no. It's a little female. Okay. So, two females, and you'll notice what's really interesting on the passagula population is that 60% of them lack a gular scute, just like a razorback moss turtle. So nothing there. This lady has a hint of one, but most of them completely lack it. Wow, whereas our, our pelts were back in Georgia, Alabama, they all have a gular scute. Exactly, in fact, lacking it is supposed to be diagnostic for the razorback moss turtle. Dude, that's so cool. These are so different looking. Obviously, you have to look at a lot of striped neck musk turtles to see differences like this, but um, as somebody who's seen a lot over the years, these are just, they're a lot lighter. Um, just kind of the shape of them is different. They're just, I mean, just pretty little, you know, tan to golden colored turtles. give this to Grover and he's gonna do uh, mark and measure and his magical marking and measuring and science stuff so working with uh, who the baby daddy is that's right yeah. you are not the father <laughs> this is my honey hole you can't do this anywhere else wow what? I think I yep she's mm -hmm. she's probably the prettiest one in here really yeah so she's 10 Seven, four, two, one. She's 13. Okay. So I'm going to bring them all back because I like okay. to get year to year data on them. So yeah, yeah. Just such cool turtles. Staying in a campground tonight, and there's a spillway I saw on the way back to the campsite. I want to go shine around it. Um, I heard that there is some cool snakes here, uh, also some cool turtles. So we'll see if there's anything around this spillway. All right, so just over this ridge is a cooter. I'm going to try and jump down here and grab it. Eastern River Cooter, Mississippi. That is a beautiful river cooter. Look at the colors on that thing. That is astounding. Nice, rich oranges. Uh, just a beautiful shell. Pretty eyes, too. This is a really, really nice cooter. When she was actually asleep right along the edge. Uh, but you can get kind of a good look at her. They're very similar in appearance to the uh, coastal plain cooter, uh, but this is actually a river cooter. But you know, the thing that I've seen in photos from ones from Mississippi is um, they do kind of have characteristics of the coastal plain cooter and the Eastern river cooter. But uh, I do believe this would still be considered to be a Sudemi's Cancina. So beautiful, beautiful Eastern river cooter. It's very different than the ones that, uh, that I see where I'm from. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the steam coming off of it too. That, that's pretty cool. The water that it was in is super, super warm and the air temperature right now is dropping. Uh, it's probably in the 50s right now. So um, as these water temperatures stay warm, uh, these turtles have a nice little warm blanket 
uh, kind of over them as the air temperatures drop. And that's just kind of how turtles do things, but wow. I've seen a lot of cooters, but this is a first for me to see one that's just this golden. I mean, that is just absolutely golden. The eyes are like a really pretty green color, nice thick patterning, light colored skin. Wow. And just gonna put her back right here where I found her. There you go, girl. Have a good night. All right, it's day two here in South Mississippi. Uh, waiting on my buddy Grover to meet up and we're gonna start uh, probably snorkeling for some turtles today. Right now I'm kind of walking around the state park checking for uh, small turtles in the shallows and I'm gonna walk these uplands and see if I can find any snakes. So uh, yeah, yesterday went so well. I'm hoping that today can uh, live up to uh, the standard that we set yesterday. All right, so this is day two in South Mississippi. I'm out here with Grover Brown. We're gonna start looking for some turtles. And uh, today we're gonna try a new tactic. We're gonna go snorkeling. I went and bought a wetsuit. That's why I'm wearing this goofy looking thing. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm super psyched. This is gonna be really cool. Hopefully we get some cool underwater shots. So follow along and uh, wish us luck. All right, so Grover and I were snorkeling and uh, I kind of came along the edge of a tree. The bottom looked just right, looked like something had been there. And I uh, kind of came along, saw these three keels sticking out underneath a log. Kind of came up, I told Grover, I was like, dude, there's one right here. We both go down and um, a little bit of a battle to pull it out. Uh, they're really good at wedging underneath things and using those keels to their advantage. But uh, we got this girl out and I would call this about a, I don't know, maybe 25 pound say about 25 pound female yeah right. um, and at this size you know this girl is mature she'll probably keep growing a little bit but females are smaller than the males uh, but I couldn't be more stoked to actually catch such an awesome western alligator snapping turtle here in Mississippi you know I catch a lot of Apalachicolas sometimes some Swannies and uh, it's really awesome to actually come out here and see the uh, the westerns what an awesome turtle check that out how cool is that such an amazing turtle look at the habitat look at this i mean this is perfect you couldn't you couldn't draw a better picture of where these turtles live i'm so stoked so we're gonna get some underwater shots and some photos and we're gonna let this girl go and keep going Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So we finally snorkeled up our first Razorback of the day. So this is a adult female Razorback musk turtle. But what makes her kind of unusual is she's got this cell deformity. And it looks like perhaps a little bit of scoliosis, maybe a little bit of kyphosis. And so we don't know exactly what caused this. Greg did point out that there is kind of this pockmark here. Almost looks like something could have bitten her at a young age and caused this, or it could just have been congenital. Um, we don't know. Things we'd like to know, but really pretty female. I don't know if you can see the, the coloring on the head here. And their shells down here are just gorgeous um, in these sandy black water streams because they're usually devoid of algae. Uh, I've got several turtles marked from this particular stream stretch and I never get tired of seeing them. You can see it's just like these yellows and peaches and oranges and just yeah, peaches are good ones. I, I think with a lot of people they they think razorback musk and they think of like a gray or pale colored turtle with just spots on it but then when you see them here and they have those colors and then you look at the rest of this stream habitat you know they just they blend in so perfectly and they're just totally made for exactly this you know this kind of habitat i mean musk turtles are really just some of the coolest turtles on the planet they are <laughs> yeah, all the time. Nice. Look at that nice. shell. Nice. Look at that shell. Dude, that is so beautiful. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, I love this shell. Wow. Or have you seen a pretty shell? Wow. That is insane. <laughs> here a Pascagoula map turtle that Greg snorkeled up. This is actually an adult male. You see they're pretty spectacular. This is one of two turtle species endemic to Mississippi. So you've got the Pascagoula map turtle, Gratzmi's Gibbons eye, and the yellow sawback, which is Gratzmi's Plata maculata. And um, map turtles are our most species group of turtles here in the southeast. There's about 14 species. Uh, a lot of them are isolated to single river drainages and this is an example of that so this adult male i don't know if we can get his head color pattern to show through but gorgeous blues uh, and greens on the mass there highlighted and accentuated by these oranges on the carapace and uh, the females of this species are what we call durophagus and mollusk giverus so they specialize on on mussels and clams and get these really big heads whereas these guys have a more petite head they use for uh, mostly consuming insects and, and other smaller uh, invertebrates. So super cool turtle, super awesome catch by Greg. This is one of the turtles I definitely came here to see so couldn't be happier. When I saw this guy sitting on the bottom I just was in disbelief. Wow. So good. So good. Nice black keel on too. Yeah.
next turtle I snorkeled up. I was uh, going through some branches and this girl tried to swim past me. So I scooped her up and here we go, big girl river cooter. Just like the one I found last night. These guys have kind of a cool pattern on them. They're, there's just different parts of them that just remind me of the coastal plain cooter, but they are in fact river cooters. So something really neat. Another thing to notice on this one, she has a big bite out of the back of her shell. Not 100% sure on what could do that, uh, but I know there are alligator snappers in here and they will prey on turtles. It's a possibility, could be alligator, could be anything, but um, big healthy turtle. Super stoked to see this girl. All right, so that's it. Had a great time. Uh, big thanks to Grover Brown. Without him helping me and guiding me and showing me around, none of this would have been possible. Um, this is something that he and I had been talking about for years and kind of finally did it. And uh, so all the thanks goes to this guy. Best dude on earth. Look up Grover Brown Instagram. Uh, he has the best turtle Instagram there is. That looks good for alligator snappers. They love that. All right, I stopped on the way to a spot and I saw this creek and it just looked too good. And I felt like, okay, I need to stop and wade or even maybe snorkel it. And uh, about five minutes into being here, first turtle right here, looks like a river cooter. I'm gonna pick him up and we'll get a look at what this river cooter looks like. Let's see. Hello, fellow. How are you? <laughs> oh, he's got a lot of older male, got a little bit of a uh, reticulate melanism starting on some of his uh, legs and stuff older gentleman but otherwise good looking river cooter uh has that same look as a lot of these that i've seen around you know southern mississippi but he's got some good weight to him those long claws tell you he's a male in addition to that longer tail and the males tend to have a flatter more torpedo shape to him and uh look at those eyes what a pretty turtle so i'm gonna let him go and i'm gonna keep on looking and see what else is around here but uh five minutes on the water turtle not bad Nice gibbon's eye, female gibbon's eye, Pascagoula map turtle. Now you saw the male when I was with Grover yesterday, and this is the female. As you can see, they get a really big head. Uh, they get those expanded alveolar surfaces, just like uh, what we saw in the Barber's map turtles down in South Georgia. And these guys are running along the bottom, feeding on mollusks. And uh, the females develop this really high hump shell to help fit that big head inside there. So we're gonna get some more shots of this girl, clean her up a little bit, and um, couldn't be more stoked. This was the exact turtle I came and stopped at this creek for. I was kind of hoping I would see one, and um, really, really, really stoked. <laughs> that is such a cool turtle, look at that. And just that big old set of chompers. All right guys, so after three incredible days, that's gonna have to do it for my trip here to uh, Southern Mississippi. 
Uh, big thanks to Grover Brown. Without Grover, I mean, none of this would have happened. Uh, he put me onto the spots. He took me around. He even caught some of the turtles. Uh, so big, big thanks. Follow Grover Brown on Instagram, at Grover Brown. And uh, be sure to drop the like on this video. Uh, leave a comment. Do both. Helps the algorithm. Helps me. Helps you. So uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. You guys take care. Peace.